Hello, this is Angela with Angela's Shadow, and today we are going to start our Dreams 101 series. Today we are going to be talking a little bit about dream and consciousness and the th types of dreams and a little bit of dream history. But first, a little bit about myself. I have been writing my dreams down since I was in sec uh, since I was in seventh grade, which would have made me what like 10, 12. Then I started writing my dreams is because I had this one dream that really, really like made me question why I was having dreams like that. <laughs> um, and I just really wanted to share it with people. So I wrote it down. I remember I wrote it down on a piece of paper and um, I showed it to my friends and they were like, whoa. And then I showed it to one to one of my friends that actually had a dad that he was into metaphysics to esoteric things. And he was like, don't worry about it. And I was like, I'm gonna be worrying about it for the rest of my life, what do you mean? I wrote that dream down and then also prior to that, like years and years and years prior to that, I really, I had this one dream that I had for like eight years, eight consecutive years and I would always have it at the beginning of the year, uh, probably like the first or the third of the, of the like between those three days. Um, in January, of course, and it, it was a festival, right? It was a carnival of some sort. And like the first time that I dreamt of it, um, I was going into the carnival for the first time. Once, you know, whatever happened, happened, and I woke up, I would see lights on the on the closet. And the funny thing is that they were always on the closet. Now, whenever I was, t I was little, little, I used to live with my grandmother, and my grandmother, the room that I used to stay in, didn't have the ability to reflect anything off the closet because it was like the window of that room was to a small outdoor room that had very limited amount of light of natural light coming in there was really no way that that was <laughs> that was coming out of anything else right the way that it was that the way that it was set up now as i was growing older like the next year um the dream would start at the end of the dream prior um, and then it would continue and again I would wake up and I would see the same lights um, so that happened for about eight years the last time that I had it uh, the carnival was shutting down I woke up and I didn't see those lights so that was really sad but by that, by that time um, I had actually moved to El Paso with my parents and I had a room that you know, could have explained the lights without me having to like freak out about it, honestly. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, I think at some point I kind of convinced myself that it was just lights coming out from like the outside. But um, the thing is that they were always the same lights. <laughs> like it was a heart. Uh, it looked like little stickers, essentially. Like it was a heart, a little moon and a sun. It always had the same exact thing, like there was always, in the dream at least, there was always like a window made out of stars um, and every single year different things would go through that window. I've always had weird dreams. <laughs> I've always really liked to talk about them, I've always loved to interpret them, I've always loved to learn more about them. I mean, dreams are the language of the unconscious and I really love it, you know. So that's kind of where I'm at. <laughs> and I think that right now it's just a really good time for me to move forward with this. I've always wanted to put it out there. I've always wanted to help people with their dreams. I've always wanted dreams to be a much more interactive thing. And for people to actually understand why they're dreaming the things they're dreaming, you know? And dreams can be a heck of a tool. <laughs> you know, you don't have to... And the cool thing is that, like you don't have to tell anybody about it if you don't want to i know for a long time i you know like i went from catholic to spiritual i technically i went from catholic to pagan then i kind of just like slid into the spiritual place um my family has had a hard time with it but dreams like me being able to look at my dreams and work in my dreams with my guides and everything like i don't have to tell anybody about it like i have all of my re dreams written down on my Google Keep, which I'm the only one that has access to it. Um, and it's just, you know, like 
a seven minute ritual in the morning where I wake up and I, you know, take care of myself and I write my dreams down. Like, <laughs> and then I think about them. So it's like, if you were starting this, it's, it's, it's a really good tool. So, um, I think it's just time to share it. So the types of dreams, um, unconscious dreams, uh, dreams that go into the collective conscious and then, uh, the astral plane dreams, uh, what I've experienced in my own dreams what I've experienced with other people's dreams. Like those are just a really good, that's just a good basis to look at. So unconscious dreams are the first and literally would just what everybody thinks about whenever they think about why we dream. Freud and Jung and Erickson uh, did dream interpretations, dream analysis. Um, I read Carl Jung's uh, book because he actually is, first of all, he's a very revered um, psychologist and he also is you know, towards the later part of his life, he actually went into a lot of the spiritual things. So he like saw, saw spirits and he worked with those things and he like knew the importance of spirit in our, in our psyche. So for someone that goes into spirituality, it was like a huge deal to see someone that is still looked at today that became essentially an alchemist. So if you guys are into that, especially if you're into psychology and spirituality, you might want to go and read him. His uh, book is um, Dreams, Memories, Reflections. Um, it, I read it on Audible. Uh, obviously, I didn't read it. I heard it on Audible. Um, so the unconscious dreams, right? Uh, we have this peripheral vision and our vision is like so crazy because it does so much more than what we think it does. So our peripheral vision um, and really our vision in general captures like tons of information at any given point, right? So one of the things that people say about dreams is that you never dream about someone that you don't know. If you have dreams where you frequently dream of people that you have no idea that you like you've never seen them, uh, you're walking down a sidewalk and then you see a person walk past you and your peripheral vision captures that person's face and then puts it in your dreams to fill in for the people that you don't know. So I think that's really creepy. <laughs> Actually what your your unconscious does, you know, like you capture a crap ton, of, crap ton of information throughout the day and then you have to process it at night. Um, also, of course, and this is why psychoanalysis looks at dreams, is that a lot of our things that are repressed go into our unconscious. Carl Jung actually uh, named it the shadow instead of the unconsciousness, but uh, for the sakes of psychology, we're just going to we're just going to go with Freud. Um, anything that's repressed, anything that you don't want to look at, anything like that, that goes into your unconscious. And guess what? If your unconscious thinks that it's time for you to deal with it, you are going to see it in your dreams. It's going to be processed. For example. A lot of times we have dreams about people and then we think, oh, that's them. And it's like, no, <laughs> no, that's not them. That's your version of them. You're married and you have a dream that your husband cheated on you. And then you are like, you wake up and you're like, oh my God, get out of my bed. Like, go away, you know, go with the other woman. <laughs> um, so first, it could be that you have a lot of insecurities and you're dealing with them by uh, your brain symbolically showing you what you're afraid of. Second, you could unconsciously be picking up on things, suspecting a little bit of something, and then your brain puts it together for you in your dream. So it doesn't necessarily mean that that's what's happening, but could have, uh, in your peripheral vision, you could have seen that his phone lit up on you know, and it was a girl's name. And then like your consciousness didn't think much of it, but then your un unconsciousness was like, who's that girl? The unconscious dream is going to be the most common dream. It's going to be what everybody has. Everybody, everybody has unconscious dreams. Your unconscious has to process information. And so it will always be there for everybody. Every single dream has unconscious information in it. It's one of the most common types of dreams. That's everybody has it, right? That's why we have psychoanalysis because of unconscious dreams. Let's talk about collective conscious dreams. 
So the collective consciousness is actually really interesting because Carl Jung actually talks about this as the collective unconscious. The reason why he did that is because the collective is not necessarily some that not necessarily something that people can access consciously unless they are woke. These are my vitamins. I'm just playing with them. So if you ever go to like an intuitive, like myself, um, somebody that channels anything, some medium, somebody, like any, any type of psychic ability, the psychic ability is going to come through the collective conscious most of the time. Um, and the collective conscious is kind of like a cloud, like the iCloud. Um, basically, the collective consciousness has absolutely every single piece of information ever available. Past, present, future, there is no time in the collective consciousness, it just exists. So the collective consciousness, though, has a level of emotion added to it. I had to edit out that piece because it didn't quite make sense, but what I meant to say is that, for example, right now we are going through massive systematic change, and obviously that is affecting us greatly. Uh, there's obviously a lot of fear, there's a lot of hate, there's a lot of anger, there's a lot of sad. So everybody, because everybody is connected, is sharing those things, especially empaths. So right now, if you are feeling like absolute crap and you have no idea why, you're probably an empath and you're probably feeling everybody's energy right now. So, um, just as a quick, quick side note, Opalite, Black tourmaline, uh, obsidian, um, onyx, what else? Amethyst. All of those are really good. Opalite is my favorite. That's the one that I use. All of those are really good empath protection uh, stones. Go buy one if you're feeling like this. Basically, the collective consciousness is like... Uh, if everybody is kind of feeling the same thing, um, you're going to feel it with them kind of thing. Um, and once you have woken up, you have the ability to say like, no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, uh, tap into that energy. Um, I'm going to be very selective of the type of energy that comes through. Um, <clears throat> which I think if you're an experienced, uh, like an aged empath or medium or psychic or anything like you have a really good control over that thing over those things unless you don't want to um but the collective consciousness has like all sorts of information including that so this is an example of the collection collective consciousness a lot of psychics during 9-11 uh like right before 9-11 or something had a dream about uh 9-11 happening uh the one that comes up to mind first is dakota lawrence and he had that dream. I have also, I also myself experienced something similar. Um, probably not to the degree that he did, but I definitely had the dream before that it happened. Hearing a lot of people talk about how they have dreams of revolution lately. They have dreams about wars. They have dreams about the like violent things. They have dreams about like, you know, just like the world ending. So many people are having those dreams right now because that's what the collective consciousness is feeling. Social media is all about that right now. Uh, in general, everybody is like right now, people should be sharing those dreams if they are having dreams. Now, all of those things don't necessarily mean that the world is ending. Um, it just means that right now the world is changing. We are going through a massive change. Now, deja vu is... Uh, normally explained by medicine by like a, a chemical imbalance in your brain where you attempt to make a memory and then it like kind of flops in the middle and then you're like oh i remember this but you don't it's just that your memory there was another memory that was kind of like that i know for me deja vu kind of makes me sick <laughs> it makes me very nauseous uh and i think that that's where i saw the difference in like uh that feeling of deja vu only happened for like one or two seconds but if I dream about something actually happening the dream will last or like that feeling that knowing that I've seen that in my dreams is going to last for a few minutes instead of, of just a few seconds um, and I will have very specific information that comes through it not necessarily just like oh I've dreamt this before like no like i will be like oh and now this is going to happen and now this is going to happen and now this and like it just kind of goes on for a few minutes until the dream falls 
that's something that, you know, we kind of go into. Also, if someone is feeling pain in some, in some way and you dream about them feeling pain or anything like that, that is probably downloading information from the collective consciousness, just from their own personal file. Um, anything like that, uh, if you dream about past lives, if you dream about future lives, if you dream about your spirit guides, anything, anything like that is going to be from the collective consciousness. So that's the second time. The third type of dream is probably my favorite and probably the hardest to describe. Um, it is an astral travel dream. Now, I say it's astral travel. Um, some people might want to think it's astral projection. It is not astral projection because I am not physically and no, physically leaving my body while I'm awake. I might be leaving my body while I'm asleep, but not while I'm awake. And I think the difference is that, you know, whenever you're astral projecting, you are completely lucid in that state. And whenever I'm astral traveling, I am not completely lucid. I can be lucid um, if it turns into a lucid dream, but I'm usually not lucid. Uh, astral traveling is actually really interesting because you can go into so many different places like you can jump timelines you can jump dimensions you can go into like the past you can go into the present you can go into the future like you can go into so many different things now this is where you can actually go into people's dreams for example um, i had a dream with this one friend and he and i were very close spiritually um and I was asleep and then I had a dream that this girl that I didn't like at Chick-fil-A, I used to work there, um, she was like, hey, wake up and talk to this person. And I was like, okay. So I woke up <laughs> and this person was texting me. He was like, hey, are you, are you awake? And I was like, uh, now I am. <laughs> sure. You want to wake me up right now? That's fine. That's totally great. Anyway, so that's that's one thing, right? Like he kind of, you kind of poke at that person spiritually or astrally. Um, another thing would be if you actually go to visit someone while in their dream. I had a dream where one of my friends, I'm going to call this friend Lauren. And this friend, this friend that was a uh, spiritual person with me. His name, I'm going to call him Tom. Um, so I had a dream that Lauren or hmm, that Tom and I went into this apartment and Lauren kind of went crazy and started stabbing him. And then I was like, what the heck are you doing? And blah, you know, like I was like, what? <laughs> and so um, I was trying to save him and I put him in a car and like, Everything around me was like rubble and fires were happening everywhere. Like it was like post-apocalyptic kind of thing. And um, I took, I drove him to a hospital and um, I don't even know what she did after that, honestly. Like I remember this, this, this was a long time ago, but um, I was like crying and I was holding his head on my lap and I was just like, oh my God, what am I going to do? Like it was this whole crazy thing. And then I texted uh, Tom about it and then he was like, oh my God, you have to tell Lauren about this. And I was like, okay. So I told Lauren about it and then she told me that she had a dream where she ended up killing Tom as well. Um, and then she kind of went crazy and like ruled the world or whatever. I think we were all kind of like in the same astral plane and obviously our dreams weren't exactly the same, but they mixed up together really well. And so that, that, that was like an experience for all three of us. We were all experiencing in the astral plane that our unconscious, uh, put its, its symbols in so that we could easily understand it and get it into our psyche better. If I had had a dream where Lauren and Tom were in a boat, like Lauren, Lauren, this, they were kind of like in a boat. Um, I don't like boats, so <laughs> I don't like boats at all. See, I almost choked. They were like, look, tell them that you died in a past life, <laughs> drowned, um, not the Titanic, but, um, I, if I had, I wouldn't, I wouldn't dream that I was in a boat. <laughs> like I just wouldn't. Actually last night I dreamt that I was a slave on a ship and I stole someone's gold and then they were like, I went and I was like, yo, I stole your gold. And then they were like, 
no and i was like yeah and i stole the key too and i hid it and then they were like oh, fine and then they gave me money and they sent me to another boat and then the captain on the other boat was like hey they really liked you and i was like what <laughs> like what because i don't like boats <laughs> so my subconscious was like okay here you go we'll just take you to an apartment that's falling apart and there's rubble everywhere and there's kids crying and there's gangs everywhere and there's like and you're just like okay that's a really good example of astral travel dreams actually because everybody shares it it's like a collective dream together um and that just is you traveling into that dream now also with this tom person i used to go into his dreams and we like there was this one time that i went into his dream and he like he was dreaming about like things and like fighting like in a video game and um he was like what are you doing here and i was like I don't know <laughs> like I just kind of I came here I don't know um and then I was like okay I'm leaving bye and then I went back into my own dream and just continued whatever I was dreaming after before that so it helps to be lucid when you're travel uh when you're traveling but you don't always have to be you know um actually I think that is probably going to uh allow you to go through this more without your ego to not be to not be lucid than if you were to be lucid because if I were to be lucid in that dream where Lauren killed Tom I would have like not not just been crying I would have been like okay I'm gonna heal Tom first of all and then I'm gonna throw you off the building because you just hurt Tom <laughs> like <laughs> no <laughs> that's 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 pretty much the three types of dreams I. I'm getting this history from a book called Dreaming with the Divine. Um, and um, if you guys want to read it, it was, it's really old. So it's kind of, it's probably like super cheap um, on it, Amazon or whatever. But basically what it talks about is uh, dream incubation. Dream incubation is where you set an intent before you go to sleep. Um, and then you ask your guides or a specific deity to go into your dream and answer your intention um, and then you wake up you write your dream down and you interpret it now in that's still that's still a huge uh thing that you can do now that's a huge tool in the old world especially specifically egyptian these people would go into the temples so they would have like a ritual right to to cleanse themselves and they would go into the temple for the deity that they needed advice from um say like they needed advice from an agricultural de deity because they were having tr problems with the crops um so they would go through this entire ritual it could last from like a day to multiple days um you had to go through a cleanse of your body your mind and your soul um and then you would have a very specific intent you can't just go into one of those dreams without being like, and just being like, I just want to talk to you. Like, no, <laughs> you say, um, I like, for example, an intention for you now could be like, I want to know who my spirit guides are. That's an intention. Uh, go into these temples with your intention and having been cleansed and whatever, and you go to sleep and there's a dream interpreter. So once you go to sleep and you wake up, you tell your dream to the interpreter and the dream interpreter has been in this specific deity it doesn't he they don't move around because that dream interpreter has to have knowledge from that specific deity so like those deities have uh, symbols that they give you um, and you like for example, if a specific god is like, okay, well, my symbol is the snake. So if you dream of snakes, that's me. Okay, well, if the snake slithers towards you, that's a yes. If the snake slithers away from you, that's a no. If the snake is seen an, an apple, that's temptation. If the snake is shedding its skin, that's change. If like, like about multiple snakes around you and you're afraid of the snakes, that could be anxiety. That could be like, there's so much from that one deity that that dream interpreter has to remember. So that's where dream dictionaries actually came from. They had their symbols and they're in the symbol interpretation. So like, um, 
you know, whenever you go to dream dictionaries now and they're, you're like, uh, teeth falling, what does that mean? And then the dream dictionary is like, okay, teeth falling means this. Also, teeth falling is a very good example of collective consciousness dreams because everybody has those dreams and it means the same exact thing every time. We can all like interpret our own dreams because we have our own symbols. Uh, it can mean multiple different things for you. Now, my mother, it's a great example of this because she dreams of the weirdest things. Um, thinks that whenever, or she believes that when she dreams of airplanes, she's going to have a fight with my with my dad. If she dreams of poop, she's going to get a lot of money. If she dreams of snakes, it's going to be obviously jealousy. Um, and so those those three symbols for her are constant. They never change, like ever, ever, ever. Um, if I personally, let's see if I have any symbols, if I dream of water, I usually dream of the ocean. The ocean for me is emotions. Um, it's cleansing. It's just a part of who I am. So I see it a lot everywhere. Um, like last night, I just dreamt I was in the ocean. Uh, let's see. I don't think I have any specific symbols for myself, actually. I should, but I my dreams are just like so weird that I, I, they never really, they're never really the same. <laughs> so I don't know. Um, I know that I have like recurring dreams that I have are like getting fired from my job. <laughs> um, but obviously that's because that's my anxiety. That's my subconscious trying to deal with my anxiety, essentially. Um, if I dream, if I ask any specific deity for anything, um, I will definitely just like meditate on it and get the symbols from it if I don't understand it. Most of the time, because I am an intuitive, I can just get the response very quickly um, as, as, as I am interpreting the dream. So it really, it really depends on who you are and what you are comfortable with doing. But um, dreaming with the divine, dreaming in temples, Dream incubation, all of those things are extremely common um, and they're very useful still. They're, they were useful be before and they're useful still. If you guys are interested in this type of stuff, please make sure that you um, like and you subscribe because this is the very first video. I'm going to be talking about more stuff. For example, next time I'm going to be talking specifically about lucid dreaming um, and that as a technique. Um, I'm also sharing my dreams. I have really crazy dreams and I think that every time I share them with my friends, they're like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> so I am actually going to be sharing them on TikTok. So I'm going to leave my TikTok name down below if you guys want to subscribe to that. I will also be talking about dreams and tarot readings in those dreams and those in that platform as well. Um, I also just opened an Instagram for this account um, and it is Angela's Shadow, of course, and it... And I will be posting stuff there too. I'm just going to be posting everywhere because I don't know. If you guys like the video, um, please share it um, and subscribe. Uh, and I will be putting more content on here every week. So I'm excited for that. And I, I'm just going to stop talking now.